My guest had a life of drug use, PSD, all the things you would think of as a life that would be a life without a great purpose, yet her life has blossomed into something great. And um, really behind the scenes, um, big things have happened that um, most people aren't even aware of. So um, we're going to be talking about how God uses flags, banners, and how God uses Rosie. And um, I hope you can um, also make sure you catch her on her, the website because we're just going to have a short time to talk about all the things you do. So thank you. You're welcome. It's a privilege to be here. It's a privilege to have you here. Um, I got to attend a workshop today that you had and uh, was really amazed and surprised. Um, I've heard of shofars. I've heard of prayer, <laughs> you know, singing, worship. You know, there's, there's ways I've heard of um, different ways of um, communicating with God and, and having God... Um, work through our lives but you use flags I do <laughs> all the time <laughs> yeah and so what's the what's the a biblical reference to that since in our life in our um, country most of churches don't even think of that um, the biblical foundation essentially if you think about the history with Moses it goes back there now initially people are gonna go well Moses didn't have a flag he didn't have a flag but God asked him at one point in time, what is in your hand? And my paraphrase, Moses answered, I have a stick. And so likewise, you know, I have a rod, essentially, is what Moses answered. And God used that. God used it mightily. No different than when David stepped up to slay Goliath. Basically, the, the concept was what was in his hand, five smooth stones. And so it's a partnership with an awareness and an identity of who we are and a, and a coupling with God, some, a tool that he puts in our hand and this product manufactures itself, the two working together become one. For example, when Moses lifted his rod, he delivered an entire nation across a raging sea and got them over to the other side with a stick. You know, when I hear you share that, that to me, that makes me think of if anybody watching was going to partner with um, something that God will, you know, wants them to do, big things can happen. With, with uh, uh, David, it was a stone. With Moses, it's a rod. Okay. Yep. And with you, it's flags. Yes. <laughs> and with me, it's something else. And yes. with the people watching, it's going to yes. be something else. But the idea is, is to really <clears throat> find out where your anointing is or that place yes. in God. And everybody has one. Yes. So, okay. Um, but there are some biblical references to banners. Yes. The biblical references coming forward we find in the book of Numbers. Um, essentially, after Moses delivered the nation of Israel across the Red Sea, um, they arrived. And then, as we know, the, the nation broke out into 12 separate tribes. We have the tribe of Levi, the tribe of Benjamin, Asher, Gad, the, the tribe of Judah, and so forth. And in the book of Numbers, starting in chapter 1 and chapter 2, I believe uh, reference 1, 51 and 52, etc., and you can do the lineage history. Essentially, God gave instruction to Moses. He said, now, my paraphrase, break everybody up into their tribes and tell them to erect a banner that is symbolic of the tribe that they are from. And that's where the, <clears throat> we know the tribe of the... the the tribe of Judah erected and used the lion, and so on and so forth. The tribe of Levi had a symbol. The tribe of Benjamin, Ad, Gasher, they all had a different symbol on their banner. And every part of, so if you were of the, the tribe of Judah, you were known by the symbol of the lion, and so forth. And so they camped under that banner. The banner was lifted up on a pole. The symbol was created amongst the tribe, and you camped under your own banner specifically. Mm -hmm. um, my husband, he is Swiss, and he talks about well, the coat of arms is that that's kind yes. of what we're talking about too, correct? Um, coat of arms, uh, I think, would be very different than that. Okay. I think if you think more about. Um, for example, uh, Joan of Arc is one of the people that I studied uh, historically about her, her call from God. She was specifically given um, 
a vision from the Lord and she created a banner. She created a standard and a pennant. So there's three different types of um, <clears throat> ensigns is, is the key word. You don't ever find the word flags in the Bible. You're going to find the word standard and or banner and or ensign. So that's just kind of, if somebody wants to do the f research on flags, you never find the word flag. Mm -hmm. um, Isaiah 59, I believe, is where the Lord says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, I will lift a standard against him. So the word standard there is, is, some, is a banner. It's, a, it's an emblem. And so Joan of Arc times, medieval times, if you'll think about that scenario, you have this army that is advancing on horseback and, and you know, you have this depiction of all of these knights on, on horseback and most often lots of them are carrying some type of flag or standard or, or banner. The flanking ones or the ones that are going forward first usually have the big wide banners and on that is symbolic of the king that they serve. So it's the king's crest or the mm -hmm. king's emblem. And every army or every knight or every soldier or however you want to d define that is serving under that banner. That's the sim symbolic of the same as the tribes. This is who we are. This is what we stand for. And if you're for us, then you line up behind this banner. Mm -hmm. Then soldiers or knights essentially would also carry standards, which are long like um, streamers, more symbolic of a streamer looking flag. And oftentimes their family crest would be symbolic on that or their family color or their mm -hmm. family name, if you will. So it, it's sim similar in a, as a coat of arms concept, but not the same. Mm -hmm. Is there a biblical reference, uh, whereas when Jesus comes on a white horse with his armies, will the, there be a banner? Not off the top of my head, am I remembering one, but I, I the, the, the thought comes to me where he is already tattooed with the, no, the scripture tells us he's, he's labeled with King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Mm -hmm. So he already is the banner. So he is the banner. He is the banner. Yeah. Jehovah Nisi is also translated the Lord God, our banner. He's that standard. Wow. So he, he already is the banner. Okay. Okay. So um, you talked about Joan of Arc and her um, banner. Uh, okay. I saw, got a little taste of what you do today at the workshop. Can you give us, before we get into all the kind of the details, could you give us like a, um, some amazing testimony that people will go, wow, that, that's pretty cool, um, to maybe open their ears so they want to know a little more. Testimony about myself? Yeah, yourself. Or Joan of Arc in general, or you? No, no, you're yourself, to, yourself. Oh, your, myself. Your own testimony. Oh, with, gosh. With, with works of uh, flags. Um, well, a couple of years ago, um, I've been in flag ministry as a ministry for upwards of 20 years, essentially. I started out um, with drama ministry teams. I had teams of young people. And we would use nation's flags more specifically with choreographed uh, presentations and so on. And so over the years, I've, you know, that was sort of my scenario. Um, up until probably about 2005-ish, so 14 years or so ago, um, did I kind of... Um, so let me go forward a little forward. So around 2008 or 9, somewhere in there, demographics. So for at least the last 10 years, I've sort of done a solo thing. And what I mean by that, I don't mean like a, a loner. I just mean I'm not doing a team. I'm not leading a team or choreographing a team. Mm -hmm. I'm doing more of this one-on-one. -on -one. I'm doing workshops and going out kind of uh, on my own. With that in mind, um, I think what developed over time was that sorry, <laughs> this is where it gets real for me, is that um, worshiping with flags became ministry of flags. And what I mean by the difference, anybody can pick up a flag and anybody can wave a flag and worship God with it and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And, but the differentiating, as you alluded to, was I began to be separated into a calling Mm -hmm. it, it was becoming my identity, it was becoming my purpose, and it was becoming the very reason, the fabric and the tapestry of why God created me in the first place. And when that transition's beginning to happen in a person's life, the realms of darkness come in and they try to bring um, chaos and confusion, death and destruction, James, or uh, excuse me, John 10.10, 10, the enemy comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. And that's exactly what started happening. 
um, my life took a very drastic turn. I had been sort of living this secret behind the scenes kind of behavior where alcoholism was um, beginning to accrue. I was, I was drinking a lot, um, but never really chalked it up to being an alcoholic. Um, and so I just sort of did my thing and would go to church with a Sunday hangover, but still worshiping God and waving my flags, you know, and preaching the gospel and, you know, preaching and teaching, but having sort of this hidden behind the scenes secret scenario. And at one point, alcoholism became drug use. Um, my drug of choice, or DOC for you know, all of my, <laughs> my drug addict homies out there, our DOC, my DOC went from methamphetamine, and then I transitioned into marijuana and got very hooked on that. I was self-medicating because of a history, a lot of trauma in my life, tragedy. You mentioned PTSD at the opening. Um, my scenario was the death of a child. Mm. Um, a lot of volatility growing up as a young person, um, racial issues, skin color, identity, father issues, abuse issues, sexual abuse issues. I mean, you know, you name it, we've all kind of been there, done that, bought the t-shirt and became the president. And so, but it's those very stories that God began to wrap his life around mine and began to draw from those things, this element of praise in my life. The long and short of it was about 2016, I went from uh, being a therapeutic foster parent, having adopted two daughters at very late stages of their life, um, very traumatic stories in and of themselves, a uh, prestigious 4.0 student, psychology major, studying addiction and recovery, no less, and um, sitting at the tables of administrative people, counselors and doctors, lawyers, counselors, teachers, educators, um, uh, facilitators. I mean, you know, I, I had the capacity to facilitate on behalf of these children, on behalf of my own life. I had to keep records, you know, just all this stuff, as well as um, being a minister, being utilized as a speaker internationally, all of these glorious, wonderful things that, you know, God gives us to do. But meanwhile, still behind the scenes, I was self-medicating. And um, it all came to a screeching halt in 2016. I got my first and only, uh, found myself in possession of a DUI charge. One moment in time, I uh, was having a panic and an anxiety attack while I was driving. I had self-medicated prior to leaving my house. I pulled over the car, and the long and short of it is a state patrol came up on me, and I was arrested immediately at that moment. I never even had a speeding ticket. And all of the great and wonderful accolades, the 4.0, um, the ministry, the, the teaching, the, all of it just fell at my feet. It was over and every mask that I had tried to hide behind, every worship moment I had had, every big thing or little thing I'd ever done for God was now in cold steel handcuffs, being read my Miranda rights and placed in the back seat of a Washington State Patrol car. And I was shamed and I was humiliated, embarrassed and Thoughts of suicide just began to overtake me in that moment. I had brought shame to my family. I was dealing with mental health issues. I was being accused of being bipolar. I was manic, psychotic, <laughs> you know. Pick a diagnosis, I probably could fill it. The great grace of God, I wasn't arrested in Washington State. A first DUI charge is an automatic 24 hours, but the state patrolman was more concerned about my mental health in that moment. I was taken to a hospital, given a psych evaluation, and released in that moment. What the outcome, uh, I, I lost my license for six months. Um, I ended up um, going into in, intensive inpatient uh, several months later. but. But the transition that happened was when I lost my license, um, of course I couldn't drive myself to church. I was still going to church in the midst of all that, showing up, still flagging, still doing my thing. I you know, could do the thing. Ironically, on the other side of all that, my mental health diagnosis was high functioning addict, high functioning. I thought, woohoo, 
at least I can still get that accolade because that was my life to performance was just performance was killing me uh -huh. but what would happen I would get in my van and I could drive up up the road behind my house where there was up into the hills and you know nobody would find me and I would take my bat my bag of flags up there I would still I was still getting high I was still doing my thing but I would still go up there and worship the Lord and there's a scripture in the Old Testament where um, King Saul was still on the throne before he was dethroned by David and he would go through these what we could identify today as mental health issues he would have haunting dreams and he told his armor bearer one day find me a worshiper to come and play music to be able to because in the presence of that worship those haunting dreams and thoughts and visions and voices would be silenced that's what I was doing for myself I would take myself up to the hill and I would just worship the Lord just me and all the voices in my head and all the barrage and all the chatter and all the feelings and all the emotions would just be lifted up under him as I would lift my flag in my heart and I could walk away with a piece of heart and a, a feeling of um, a, a, a right state of mind. It wouldn't last very long, but it was enough to alter the effects. The reality was I was getting high and it was, you know, making it worse. The psychosis was advancing. But the one thing I knew about flag ministry for me was when I worshipped, I had a better frame of mind. The quick abrupt part is I ended up almost committing suicide because the psychosis was getting worse. The demonic realm was after me. And I stood on location by a river one day and I was going to throw myself in. The water was raging. And I had plotted and I planned if I step out there, the water's going to swiftly take me and I'm going to hit that rock and it will be all over. And as I was about to step into that, I had the shadow and foresight to just step back and I looked up to heaven and I said, Lord, give me one good reason why I shouldn't do this. And his voice came as clear as it's ever come to me before. And he first showed me a picture of myself because what I didn't remember was six months before that moment, I had stood on that very rock that was now being raged over by the water. I'd stood there in the early fall with my flag. I have a picture of it. And I'm standing there worshiping. And now it's six months later, the river's crested, the water's raging, and that rock is being covered by this water. Well, I knew if I slipped, I would hit it. And when I said, Lord, give me one good reason why I shouldn't do this, he showed me a picture of six months before where I'd stood up on that rock with my flags up, worshiping him. And he said to me, because you've already taken this ground, now go home. And what he meant by that was because I had been there worshiping dedicating that place to him, just him and me. I'd already taken that ground for him. I could not come into that and try to take my own life. It had been a consecrated place. It was a holy place. And he was not going to allow me to take my life up in a place that I had already given to him. And so it's just been off and running since then, hasn't it? Pretty much. Yeah. White flags, meaning of the colors, protocols, changing atmosphere, which is huge for... Um, people who don't understand changing atmosphere. I mean, someday I should do a show just on that because unless, <laughs> unless you've experienced it, you don't know. Um, but it's, it's basically, you know, just to make, just to, to simplify, um, you know, if you're having a bad day and things just feel dark and somebody smiles and compliments you, all of a sudden the yeah, atmosphere is changes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's a great so, example. I love that. And it happens it's to everybody smile. every day. When you change the atmosphere with the flags or whatever, um, the anointing or blowing the shofar or whatever um, God is using you with, I mean, the entire room changes and um, miracles happen. Yeah. People get healed. People get delivered from their drug abuse or whatever. Yeah. Um, is there... Could you talk about the meaning of the colors, why flags, change, you know, the, some of this stuff? Sure. Um, I'm a U.S. ambassador for a uh, company called Catch the Fire Worship Flag. <laughs> and um, there's lots of great flag makers out there. And for the most part, um, our flags are, have specific names, specific meanings. 
colors, each color has a specific meaning in the language of heaven. Um, we read about that when Solomon was building temple, when Moses was doing temples, God gave them specifics about use this color for this reason. So there's specificity in scripture that goes to support that. The bottom line is, yes, it's a language. Flags are a language of heaven. For me, it became a way to pray when I just, you know, I'm a, I'm a writer and a poet and a speaker, yet from the depths of my heart, I just could never find the words to pray from my, you know, the anguish that was within me. And so the language through flags really helped with that. And so every flag has a specific meaning, a specific color has a specific meaning in heaven. When I pull out, you know, it's no different than when I, you know, I pull out a sword and, and it's, you know, from a, a Colt 45 to a, you know, what, I mean, you know, the differentiation of a weaponry it's making a different statement. It's and a heaven weapon knows in it. the spiritual realm. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I'd actually like to be able to get some of your pictures and show in the background some of what the the flags where you worship. Oh, um, you, you take. I, I wouldn't say selfies, but um, they are essentially <laughs> essentially <laughs> selfies. Yeah, yeah. But 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 they, they, it's not a professional photography. It's, no. Um, been, just me and the Lord. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just amazing pictures that, yes. that come up. Thank um, you. So, um, people have, from watching have all kinds of issues. Could you go through the colors, um, just kind of a general meaning, and then they can go on your website if they want a deeper meaning? Oh, sure. Um, for example, red is often used for the blood of Jesus, the passion of Christ. Um, in the spirit, if you will, you have your realms of light and realms of darkness. The color red is recognized by the realm of darkness as, you know, that's a, that's a foe. Um, blue, for example, is symbolic. It can be the river of God. It's often referred to as Holy Spirit. The color white is purity or the bride of Christ. Silver is redemption. Um, orange is the zeal and passion for the Lord. I'm just pulling random colors out. Purple is uh, a color of royalty that speaks mm -hmm. of royalty. And then you have a language when you combine all of those colors together. You have a whole nother set of language. It's just, it's sort of like speaking in tongues, for example. You know, there's a lot of different languages to choose from that God gives us. It's the same with colors. Mm -hmm. You know, you have your baseline colors or a painting, mm -hmm. but when you blend those colors together, you have a whole different story to yeah. tell and something that you you talked about today at your workshop is there are people having situations like at their home maybe there's some oppression um, the husband's an alcoholic or the wife or or a child or or something that you know teenager go, going through some stuff um, suicide or whatever mm -hmm. and um, um, you could maybe take the green flag which means life yes and just you might not know how to pray right um, but just you know Agreeing with heaven and yes. just and just moving it, moving Movement. it around that around Movement the house changes the atmosphere. Cha changes the atmosphere. Changes, yes, exactly. Yes. And and you can do just do warfare that way. Yes, parts so. of Red Sea, right in your own home. <laughs> <laughs> yep, and the list goes on. Yes, you know which people can find that information in your on your website. Yes. Um, let's see what are we missing here that is important. Um, Well, we probably covered most of it. Is there anything else you want to say? Um, nothing additionally. I, you can catch me at catchthefireworshipflags.com is our uh, website for the flag specifically. I'm on Facebook at Rosie Adams Bowden and our business website uh, on the Facebook, or rather the Facebook page is Catch the Fire Worship Flags. And I also have um, facilitate a private group which is specific for flag worshipers, and that's uh, on Facebook at Fire Catchers. So any one of those, you can find me there if anybody wants more information or host a workshop or have me come back or do whatever. But yeah, okay. it's, um, it changed my life and saved my life. God used my own gift as a gift to myself. Wow, that's great. You know, um, it's been such a blessing listening to Rosie and like so many things that there's no way that we're able to talk about and I hope we did a quick enough overview where it at least entice you to go to our website because um, you know that's her gift it's also a, like she said a um, you know standard from heaven on spiritual warfare that anybody can do um, and it's important to learn 
those things from other people with other the she has her gift I have my gift you have your gift and so um, you know you can tap into let's say her gift and get some information that would strongly benefit you but I also want to encourage you that you have your gift and you know if you're not happy it's probably because you haven't either you haven't found your gift or you're not using your gift um, for God's you know you're not partnering with God you're out there doing it on your own and wondering why you're miserable and um, so if you partner with God find your gift I mean <laughs> life is great believe me so um, thanks for tuning in and go to her website have a good week bye bye thanks. inspiration arts and crafts health and wellness communication and information we're here to encourage and inspire you do you have a gift we know you do and so do we whether you come in to look by or want to promote your gift we invite you to come in because when we're working together we can accomplish great things